Hello everyone. Welcome to NPTEL course on groundwater hydrology and management. This is week eight, lecture three. In this week, we are looking at the different types of wells, how they are constructed, and the different types and uses of wells. What we'll be doing today is that we we'll look into the more deep aquifer wells. In the initial other classes, we looked at <coughs> wells that are most commonly used in India in terms of dug wells, where a manual labor is needed. Uh, and then we looked at the drive wells where you have to hit on the top of a drive point, which goes in and accesses the water. In today's lecture, we will look on more about the driving plus water jet methods and more importantly we will look at the drilling methods where a borehole is drilled into the ground by the use of heavy machinery. So before that, I hope you had access to the book, PDF book that I shared in the last lectures. Um, most of the notes are from that also. However, the other books I use have already been given in the syllabus. In the drive point and also while you are making um, the wells, there's a lot of debris which forms. I showed an image last time where there is a lot of rocks, uh, sand, soil that can be inside the well. You will have to constantly pull it out. And some people use pulley method and some people, if it is big enough, they go in and take it through trolleys and stuff. Or JCPs come and then the big um, bulldozers, excavators, they come and take the soil out. But what do you do when the well is so small and the particles are very minute, which means it doesn't accumulate that fast. But however, if it accumulates, uh, it just stops the drilling process. Okay, The drill bits break or the drill bits go into the screens of the well and the well doesn't work. Getting a well inside is different, but if the well is fully clogged, then it's a waste. I'll show you an example. You have a drive point. Okay where you have hit the, the well hard and it has gone in. On the top, you have a point. So when you hit and it goes in, it's fine. And then here you have all the screen. The well is screened till that end. What happens is if this is clogged, which is with uh, uh, you know uh, all these debris and stuff is clogging, then water cannot flow in you are wasting the well. And this debris has to be taken out often so that <coughs> your well is working properly. <coughs> so let's see how this works. In this method, you have a well dug. It is dug by using a drill, a small um, motor which is being pushed. Um, and then you also have a mechanism to push water in. You flush water and then you pull out the debris. Okay. So, as I show you, the water is under pressure in the tube. While the water is under pressure, it comes and as it hits the nozzle, the water comes out in a very subtle manner. Okay. So, for example, I'll draw it. Water is uh, here. All this area is water, and water comes out through the tube with the debris because water comes out of the nozzle with high pressure. Okay. So, all we need to do is to make sure we understand that we have water. Uh, we keep on drilling. But if the debris is not coming, okay, if the debris is not coming out, that means there's no water. So, you keep on drilling. But by the time you keep on drilling, the soil particles, the rocks here can collapse into the well. Okay. So to prevent that, what we do is we use this water jet method to push water into the well, inject water into the well and take out the debris. So the debris comes out 
and your settling point is here where you a settling pit or point where the water with the debris comes and all the sand silt and all the rock materials lay down then you take the water out which is again siphoned back into so it's like a cyclic uh, work where you have the water taken uh, pushed into the system and then it comes back out and then goes back into the same pond or, or pit where you take water and push it again so it's not a, a full volume of water that you have to give to this pump you can keep on pushing water uh, the same water can be used <coughs> as long as you filter it or take out the debris for which we are doing this work so uh, this method is kind of expensive but it is needed in some locations mostly in locations with a lot of debris and as i showed you in the uh, geohydrology map a location which has a lot of rocks hard rocks uh, there this method is very very useful you will have to constantly pour water to take out the debris pressurized water can aid in drilling also it's not only to remove the uh, debris but also the water along with the spinning uh, drill can help in breaking the particles faster so think there is a drill which is spinning okay uh, so if there is water also hitting hard water and the drill aid together so they they mix well together and they break the drills please google <coughs> some videos on that you'll be seeing it uh, we cannot use those materials on nptl because of copyright issues that's why i cannot put them here for your reference but if you just google type it uh, in youtube or any other video channel you can find this pressurized water drilling which can be of help also in bringing sediments up as i said all the debris can also be brought up so two things can be achieved by just sending a pressurized water all you have to do is have the pump the pump uh, um, would take the water and then there is a motor which pushes the water um, at a very um, high pressure and this can also go uh, and this uh, length can be adjusted using a pulley system. Pratching is, is uh, with higher instrumentation. So this is the same concept they use in fracturing which is deep deep uh, in the bedrock or near the bedrock region uh, where gases are kept okay or or uh, they are captured the gases are captured or locked into the rocks because in the rock formation sometimes there is degassing and the gas doesn't come out and these are uh, hydrocarbons or uh, gases that can be used for fuel okay uh, and to break those kind of rocks, people use uh, fracturing techniques to break the rock and expose the uh, or, or release the gas which is being caught by a suction pump into tanks. <clears throat> there also fracturing uh, is done by using water. So now we come to the most uh, abundant type of well in India, which is the tube wells and most importantly the tube wells which are at a deep aquifer level. Uh, these go uh, at least a couple of uh, meters down, uh, if not hundreds. Um, it is in uh, 300 uh, fee, uh, feet uh, below the ground. And what happens is there is no way you can dig that kind of wells. And you need to have uh, a meter uh, a machine, a machine that can push uh, an auger into it. An auger is kind of a drilling device. Or you have to have a, a truck. For example, here you can see a truck where it is lifting the um, rotator or the drill bit up and down based on the depth which is needed. Okay. Here also there is water which comes out. So when you see a video of a bore hole being made, okay, you will see that water is gushing out from the bottom of the well. And that happens because pressurized water is sent. It's called hydraulics, uh, like a lot of water which is being pushed in. Uh, and the uh, pressure aids in uh, breaking the rock and also bringing the sediments up. So here you could see the water is pushing and the sediments come up. But most importantly, what you see is the drilling system for rotate, uh, rotary method, uh, wherein uh, mostly it is used in the hard rock aquifers or deep aquifers, which consist most of your 
or contributes to the most of the aquifer system in India. Initially, these trucks were very expensive to get one to your location. So they would charge one lakh because the, the truck is big and it has to go through different parts to come to your location and then you drill it. You could see this, these uh, trucks standing in the highway uh, because anyone can call. They don't go home for some days. They just wait for a call and then they go and do the <coughs> bore wells, <laughs> especially during the Arabi season. They are also asked to deepen the wells sometimes. So it is not only for making new wells, but also to deepen or flush out uh, another well. It is, uh, as I said, in most parts of India, and it is the most expensive method of the methods. The volume of water may be uh, much lesser compared to a dug well. Uh, <clears throat> however, these wells are preferred because of the small size. Think about it. You have a piece of land, okay? You have a piece of land, and to make a dug well, you have to contribute 10% of the land, or say 5% of the land. However, for a bore uh, drilling system, you can just have a small point comparatively to, on a land. And that one uh, well location can cater as much as water as your dug well. And in some cases, depending on the depth, depending on the water connectivity, it can be more uh, or uh, less in terms of uh, if it, the aquifer, confined aquifer is small. <clears throat> So what you see here is uh, there, it is more expensive and uh, could be done with casing or with without deepening on the region. Okay, uh, normally casing cannot go to such depths. Think about the expenses for tubes to put that deep. Okay, you have to put meters out of meters of uh, well tube. So this this one is what I'm sort of talking about the casing. So mostly it is done without the casing. Uh, but it depends uh, on the region. If the region requires uh, that the um, casing is put so that they prevent the sediments from collapsing in, you have to put. Normally what happens is you have casing only to a particular depth. And then after that, it is nothing. You just drill and then it takes it out and then you have your well ready. Um, so you have to understand that even though it is an expensive method, the other accessories would also add to the cost, thereby making it unsustainable for farmers. And now you know why there's a lot of um, uh, farm loans that farmers take for these wells, uh, especially from loan sharks, where they take too much of interest and the farmer doesn't get enough profit, uh, so they end up uh, in debt. Okay. <clears throat> What you saw in the drive point, in the drive point, what we saw is there is a coupling of wells, right? So you have a drive, okay? Uh, and then you couple it to another, uh, another length. And you can keep on adding the length based on the depth you want to go for the well, right? So same way here, you can add depth by coupling at regular intervals the pipe, which actually drills, okay? You just take it out. But when you start it, for example, the drill uh, which goes in is just this depth. And then you add another uh, another coupling to it, another coupling, another coupling. And so that's how three, four, five tubes would be kept. Always there's 10, 15 tubes uh, that are uh, uh, kept. It's like a steel pipe which is connected to the drill and then it goes in and rotates. So this is the part which rotates, okay? It rotates and then the whole body of the drill rotates. What I'm trying to say is the drill body is not one length. It can be increased by coupling. And that is how easy it is comparatively to drill deeper depths. So with this ease, what do people do? What do farmers do? Farmers have gone deeper to aquifers without the need. What am I uh, saying here is, for example, you are getting water at this level. <coughs> okay. For example, you're getting water at this level. Still, the farmer says, oh, you're here. All I have to pay is just extra diesel for um, uh, putting it much lower. So they just go deeper and deeper and deeper. 
bringing the log, this whole uh, truck and the uh, machine to that place is the expensive part. Running it is not expensive. So what they do normally is they just bring the guy and, and ask when the water hits. As soon as they know when the water hits, they do some calculations and say, okay, do you want this uh, depth or you want to go much deeper? They just have to pay some extra and the farmer goes deeper. I've seen a lot of people who complain that the water was good, but I was so jealous that I went down much deeper so that I'll have more groundwater. But then I opened the confined aquifer and it was so salty that all the water became salty. Okay, so think about if this was uh, um, a non-permeable, uh, you know, rock. And this is where I said you should have stopped with the drill if you had good water. <coughs> but some people, what they do, they just go further down and go to this aquifer underneath, which is salty water. Now, when you drill this, this water, because of pressure, will come up and mix with the unconfined or the other confined aquifer thereby making the, all the water salty. I'll do it again, just for your clarity. So this was the initial point where the good water was there and it was separated by another water using a non-permeable layer, okay? Or aquitard, aquilude, we call them. And then there is another aquitard, aquilude, and then there is water. So water is present both uh, in this region and this region, okay? So if you know that the water is good and it is enough uh, by the depth or thickness of the water level, you should have stopped. But what normally people, uh, some farmers do is, they keep on drilling and expose this water. Once you expose this water, because there is no casing, you see there is no casing, then this water would rise and mix into this water, okay? There's no casing. <coughs> and this water would come down. So there is a mix of water and this water, which is more salty, naturally it is more salty as you go down the profile. Now it makes all the water salty. There is no uh, cleaning of this aquifer anymore. You have depleted it. You have uh, made the connections between the uh, aquifers and now it is full of salt. You need to do something to reduce the salt. All you could do is take the water up, purify it and then use it for agriculture or drinking which is not very, um, uh, you know, um, profitable to the farmers. That is why you see in cities, you have a lot of ROs which are taking this uh, salt and then removing the salt, filtering it out, and then giving you drinking water. Let's move on. So this system is uh, of good use in the uh, Indian network, at least to get the wells done. But how deep you should go should be very calculated. <coughs> okay, so we have seen the three types. We have seen the dug well, the dry well, and the drilling method. Now there is also something called a combination, which is called the dug come bore well. So which means you dig first, you make the first well, which is a dug well. Until here, you do a dug well, and then after that, after that, you go down into the dug well, and then you drive your um, uh, second well. Okay, so. Initially, you would stop here. In uh, the normal scenario for dug well, you would stop here. But then once this water level has gone down, once this water is not enough, what farmers do is inside the well, they'll get inside the well and then start drilling another well, okay? Here, you cannot bring your uh, JCP or your truck into it. So this has to be mostly a drive point well, which we saw in, the, in today's example also. So then you uh, dig deeper so that you come to this uh, hard rock aquifer or this aquifer, which is going to give water, okay? So now when you make this connection, when you make this pipe uh, through the uh, pipe connection through your uh, well uh, driving point, then this water would go up and mix with the dug well, both ways, okay? So if this goes down in the bottom, the uh, high water can come down, uh, or if the water here is more, initially it is more, so it can go up, okay? And also, depending on the pressure difference, and also you can put your uh, pump head here, where you want to pump from, if it can be here or here based on the water level. So here's where how you could convert 
uh, a dug well into a bore well. So always bore is for deep aquifers. It is much, much deeper and the width is smaller. Whereas dug well is, it is the shallow aquifer and it is much bigger. Okay. So here you have a ground surface GS and then you have the well on the lining on the both sides. Then you have a dug well which has water table, but then it, it is very small. So you need extra water and you made this connection. So this is also done and it is not as bad as your uh, deep, deep bore wells. However, caution has to be here because you're also connecting a shallow aquifer and a deep aquifer for water. And the deep aquifer may not be as good as your shallow aquifer in terms of salt levels. Okay, so <coughs> we've talked about salt levels, we've talked about the methods that are used for um, uh, taking the debris out, etc. What is important is also the casing part. The casing is the side of the well that you make so that the debris doesn't fall in. So the debris is major, major uh, impact of causing factor for your groundwater wells and the performance of the well. So it is important to make sure that the casing and the screening are understood. So the casing is what is put on the sides of your, your walls of the well so that your debris doesn't move. So this rock and other things don't move. However, you want the water to move. So there's small spaces where water can move or water can move from down up. The other part is your screening. As I said, the screen is where actual water can move into the well. Okay, so these are uh, arranged in particular fashion like a matrix and then nodes are placed. It has a particular geometry, not random geometry, so that maximum water comes. If you don't do this well, for example, I have a land and I just dig a well, water just comes in. What happens is all the sediments also come in and in due course of time, you will have a lot of sediments here rather than water. More importantly, your pump is on the top, but the suction uh, opening is down, right? This is a suction opening where water moves in. If there is debris, this whole pipe gets clogged and water doesn't move. You have to change the pipe. Sometimes you have the nozzle or the, or the mouth of the tube where the water goes, that is clogged because of these sediments and uh, rocks. More importantly, these can also go into your machinery and impact your pump, depending on the pump style. There are pumps which don't get affected at all, but there are many pumps which get affected. Okay, so for all this, there is a need to reduce the debris that was going into the pumping by putting a screen well. The screen also prevents or slows down the recharge water. So it is not a win-win situation. Uh, some of the water is also lost because you have to uh, get water to move through these small holes, which is slow. So there are two types. You have the bore well, which is going into the deep aquifer, and then you have the large uh, hand dug well, which is in the smaller aquifers. Just for this uh, image, you can see both on the same depth, but mostly this will be way, way below, okay, the opening and other things. The circumference, the uh, size of the well is also of much importance in the dug well and the bore. So this is what I said, like, like let's take, this is the land and this is the land for this uh, two wells, okay? So now you have compromised on this land for growing crops because you are, you cannot grow crops here. Whereas in the second, uh, this is the first and the second, the first is run using uh, your dug well However, as I said, you have uh, crop only this area, you are losing a very uh, small fraction of the area when compared to a land with just dug well. Uh, sorry, with just bore well. You can see that the land loss is much less compared to this, like maybe four times, five times the width of a uh, bore well, you could say. More importantly, it is uh, needed because uh, most of these lands, uh, the small farm lands are already small. 
and uh, you don't have space to lose more land uh, for water, right? Maintenance, all these things. This is more maintenance. You have to cover it. You have to make sure um, nothing falls into it. It's too big. People get to uh, wash things in it or uh, bait, etc. Thereby polluting the water. Whereas here is just closed. Okay, nothing can pollute and other things. You just close the uh, top uh, cement or something, and whenever you have to change the the nose of the tube or the pump, then you take it out. So let's get into the specifics of this. Casing. The casing prevents debris from falling in into the well. It increases stability of the well because slowly when these particles move, suppose your particles are moving slowly, okay, one by one it is moving. Then at one point there will be a landslide kind of an effect where all these uh, soil moves into the well. It is called collapse of the well, okay. The well collapse can happen. But in this case, since you are preventing the movement, you are, are, are making strong boundaries. So there is no even a small amount of soil movement. Uh, so that is where the stability is kept. Now, why would these move the soil? It depends on the water movement uh, and also the disturbances which occur on the side. Okay? It's not an earthquake, but soil does move when because your well is there, uh, water is moving. So there is a movement of soil also. Allows to choose the aquifer. This is another interesting part which I showed in the previous example. This casing, the casing allows you to choose the water. For example, this is first water, second water, or first aquifer, second aquifer. You don't want the first aquifer. Maybe there is a, a industry which is polluting water in it. Okay, you don't want the first aquifer. So what do you do? You case the top layer and only open the well, the bottom layer where a good water comes in, the deeper good water. Okay, and it can become expensive as how much depth you go in this uh, profile. Now let's look at screening. Screening also allows you to uh, get into the specific depth of water access. Okay, um, the screening uh, depth is determined well drilling. So where you put the screen is also very determinable of the water <coughs> available. For example, some people would put, even though this whole water is the same water, they would put the screen here just to make sure that the top water comes in from the aquifer. I don't want to put it down because uh, if the water table falls down, then uh, you know the, all the sand, silt, clay, or the sediments will also come in. So you can pick and choose the specific depth of water access, even within an aquifer. Then determine when drilling because while you drill, while this debris comes out, I showed in your previous uh, slide also, the, the debris will come out as and when you put pressurized water or you can take the sample at every depth. So when you analyze the sample, you understand that some rocks are not good, which means the water will not also be not good, too salty, too, <coughs> too much with micro nutrients or ores, you don't want that, right? So you have to wait till you replace it or you go to a different level. Can aid in separating salty water also, same like casing, your screening can also aid in reducing the salt content, the, the minerals that go into the well because it has a filter or a very small holes. Okay. So uh, I think we have covered most of the uh, different types of wells, where the wells are uh, to be placed and the type also uh, covers the um, um, access to the aquifers, what type of aquifers there are, how much money you have also depends uh, on how you spend and, how, and what type of well you can get. Okay, so a dug well is much uh, cheaper compared to a bore uh, well uh, in terms of uh, the uh, uh, machinery, but the overall cost and time, if you want time, then the borehole is very, very cheap because you just call the guy, he'll come in a day, the, for the morning he'll start and by afternoon you have the water ready, you have the well ready, you will go. Whereas a dug well takes a long, long time. So if that aspect, it is expensive, dug wells, uh, you can look at some studies which have done the comparative analysis of these two wells. Uh, but more importantly, uh, the friendly nature to the aquifer is better in the dug well compared to the bore well.
with this uh, i would stop uh, here on, on the third lecture in the fourth lecture we would look at the wells have been established now how do you take water out it is through the pumps we we'll look at different pumps why they are used how they are used and what are the alternatives i will see you in the next class thank you